Blender comes with a nice add-on that allows you to make 3D objects based on mathematical formulas, and it generates some very interesting shapes. You can use these objects as is, or you can use them as a starting point that you can then modify for a particular purpose. In this video, we're going to use them to create pieces of art. We'll first make this image, and then we'll make this animation. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.90.1. We'll start by deleting the default cube. Next, we'll enable the add-on. So from the Edit menu, select Preferences and then Add-ons. Then from the drop-down menu, select Add Mesh and then add a check mark next to Add Mesh Extra Objects. Now when you press Shift-A to add an object and open the Mesh section, you'll have a lot more Mesh objects to choose from. The ones that we're going to be using in this video are in the Math Function section. From here, select XYZ Math Surface. This is the default object, but if we open the last operation panel, we can change it. Here you can specify your own equations for X, Y, and Z, or you can select one of the operator presets. For example, this is the Denis preset. And this is the Twisted Torus preset. The one that we're going to turn into art is the Klein preset. When this object is added, you'll notice that it puts us into edit mode, so switch back into object mode. Now let's work in camera view for a while, so press 0 on the number pad for camera view and zoom in to increase the camera window. Next we'll lock the camera to the view, so press N to open the sidebar, switch to the view tab, and add a check mark next to camera to view. Then press N to close the sidebar. Now we can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. So that we can see the changes as they're made, I'm going to switch to rendered view. I'll also turn off the overlay so that we can get a better look at what the final render will look like. Now switch to the Render tab and select the Cycles Render Engine. Then switch to the World tab and set the background color to black. Next we're going to duplicate this object. So press Shift-D and then right-click to place the duplicate in the same position as the original. Name the duplicate wireframe, and name the other one original. Now select the wireframe object, switch to the modifier tab, and add a wireframe modifier. Now we're displaying both the original object and the wireframe object. You can get the same effect with a single object by removing the check mark from next to replace original, but we're using two different objects so that each object can have a different material. For the original object, we'll use the default material. But for the wireframe object, switch to the Material tab and click the New button. Set the base color to a darker shade of gray. Then set the metallic value to 1 and the roughness value to 0.2. Next, we'll set up the light source. So select it and switch to the Object Data tab. Keep the point lamp selected and set the power to 10,000. We'll also keep the radius set to the small default value. Now set up the view that you want to render. This is the rendered image using the Cycles Render Engine with 32 render samples and I also use denoising to clean up the noise. If you don't know how to use denoising, then you can watch my video on the topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Now with a few changes, we'll turn it into this animation. We don't need the original object for the animation, so let's hide it. To do that, click the Filter drop-down menu and enable the button that looks like a camera. Now select the original object and click the Viewport and Render buttons, which will hide the object from the viewport and the final render. This leaves us with the wireframe object. For the animation, we're going to move the light source. We'll do this by setting up the light to follow a circular curve. To set this up, I'm going to switch to Solid View and re-enable the overlays. Next, press 7 on the number pad for Top View. Then press Shift-A and select Curve, and then Circle. Then scale it up in size by pressing S and make it about this size. 
Now press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then move it up on the Z axis by pressing G and then Z and drag it up until it's about even with the light source. Now we'll make the light follow the curve. So select the light source, switch to the Object Constraint tab, and add a Follow Path constraint. For the target, select the Bezier circle that we just added. You'll notice that the lamp is not located on the circle, but it's outside of the viewport window. That's because the lamp's location values are not set to zero. So press N to open the sidebar and switch to the Item tab. Then right click on any of the location values and select Reset All to default values. Now the light source is on the circle. To make the light follow the circle, click the Animate Path button. Now when I play the animation, you can see the light follow the circle. Currently, the light travels around the circle in 100 frames. If you want to change it, select the circle, switch to the Object Data tab, open the Path Animation section, and change the number of frames. I'm going to keep it set to 100. I'm also going to make the length of the animation 100 frames, so I'll set the end value to 100. This is the final rendered animation after setting up the camera view. This is rendered using the Cycles Render Engine with 32 render samples, and again I used denoising to clean up the noise. As I mentioned earlier, I'll put a link to the denoising video in case you don't know how to use it. For those that may not know how to render an animation, I'll put a link to a video for that as well. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.